Okay, short reloading video. Wanted to show you how I put a, a an AR-15 barrel into an AR-15 upper. And what I end up doing is I use my little clamp, my little bench vise, and this is like a Weaver engineering upper uh, clamp, the receiver clamp. And then inside of it is an A1 style upper. So pretty, pretty obviously pretty simple to just insert this in. All right. But what I want to show you, and I'm going to try to get close, get it in frame, is how much wobble is in there. These are guaranteed to fit usually. So what you end up getting, I'll hold this steady. Look at the receiver's not moving, but the barrel is. Now, of course, it's not torqued down, but there's a lot of play because these parts are pretty much guaranteed to, to fit together, which really means the maximum OD of this receiver uh, extension is going to be just a little bit smaller than the minimum ID of that upper receiver. So how I go about trying to uh, alleviate all that, that slop in there is I have gone on probably Amazon, maybe eBay, and I bought some one and a half thousandths shim stock. This is not stainless steel, just regular old steel. I cut a little cut a little bit out and I have some scissors in my kit just just cut it out with scissors it's not that big a deal and I just wrap this around the barrel all right I'm not going to guarantee that this will work because sometimes this is way too tight but you'll see that it, it I cut it to a certain length such that it's basically all the way around with the exception of where the alignment pin is okay so now what I just try to do make sure it's real flat up against the uh, extension and I go ahead and I try to walk it into the receiver don't force it but in the end you'll have to give it some umph if you can get this to fit by gently working it up and down back and forth it will get tighter as you go all right, now you can, it's so thin, you can easily just be crushing it. Let me show you what I mean. All right, see how I've been crushing it on the bottom? It's just a little too tight. So in order to make it less tight, it's really simple. It's almost like aluminum foil. You can kind of just fix it. Okay, you can even, if you start it a little, long, a little bit wide, you can even come in here with the scissors and you can just shave off that damage like that, okay? Now that's a lot less damaged up. What you do to make this fit better is just take off some and try it again. Now you can take that kind of uh, chowdered up part and you can put it toward the front of the extension if you want. Now see how much less coverage I have? Now I'm gonna get this set up in my fingers and try again all right here we go now it feels like it's going to go in pretty good all right so once I feel like I'm, I've gotten it in pretty good like that now sometimes you cut it just right and it's quite snug and you end up actually having to take uh, a mallet soft faced mallet like like this one here and let me get you to the end here you may actually have to tap it in from this position okay now if I was looking for a really really good fit I might have said, well, I cut too much off because I was able to hand feed it in. I could really tell, sorry guys, I could really tell that it was super close when I went and cut that half inch off. 
However, for this demonstration, I just wanted to go ahead and get that in there. Now, what I'm gonna show you is how much less slop there is now, even though there's no barrel nut on. And the barrel nut will not make this problem go away. It really won't. Um, and it will reduce it, but not. it won't make it go away. So now, you can see I have, I have much less play. There's a little bit, but it's nowhere near. And like I said, I've had these before where I've had to drive them in with my mallet, my rubber mallet, okay? So I've gotten them cut pretty nicely before. But this is what I would do, and then I would put on the barrel nut and continue on from there. So that will be a subsequent video, but this is, this is the only thing I would do that's special in any way. I don't apply any Loctite or any uh, anti-seize or anything like that. The only thing I do is before I'm all done and I think that I've succeeded and won the builder's prize for the day, I come in from the bottom and this way, you're not gonna be able to probably see in the dark, but I will inspect it. And what I'm looking for is down here in this spot, making sure none of that steel is showing and would be interrupting my uh, feed ramps area. So that's another reason to keep it a little bit short, okay? Well, this barrel does not want to come out by hand, okay? I can get it out, but I have to try pretty hard, okay? Because of this shim. Now, if I had just put this in and then I just take it out, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't even try that hard to fall out. Okay, so it's a lot tighter. And that's the goal. All right, hope you thought that was interesting.